Well, welcome back to Open Line, talking about the Metro budget. We have with us Tony Newmeyer, the Assistant Director of Finance uh, for Budgets in Metro. Kind of as we went to break, talking about the process of putting the budget together. Want to take some calls now? Let's go to Bill. Hello, Bill. Yes. Go right ahead. Yes, uh, I wanted to ask if, if if it's considered uncontrolled growth when so many native older native Nashvillians can no longer afford to live here. The issue of affordable housing and just yeah, uncontrolled growth and, and its impact on native Nashvillians. Is is that what you want us to talk about? Yes. All yes. right, Bill, thank you. Thanks for the call in. And I know you're with budgets, but what you know you hear this a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. How does that fit into the budget discussion? I think that's an interesting question because there's a lot of different people, I think, that you can classify that, that would kind of work in this question. Um, I know that this mayor um, has, has got the Barnes Fund, which is she's added another $10 million this year to help with this type of situation. There's that's also, for affordable housing. That's for right? affordable housing. And there's also a $2 million uh, housing incentive pilot program. So there's a lot of things that she's doing that's addressing this, this problem. Because it is, when you grow like we're growing, I remember... Back in 09, you could buy a condo downtown for 150000 I don't know if you can do that anymore. So it's, it's, it's kind of expensive. So th these programs are needed. When you have 100 people moving here a day or whatever it is, it's uncontrolled bad. growth, as, as some have said and Bill said in his question, then the property itself becomes the supply and demand. Sure there is less supply. There is more demand. Prices go up. So there's money being put in for the Barnes Fund and affordable housing. We've talked about that on this show. You know, that's, that's something, mm -hmm. but that's not going to solve the problem. And so how do we go about, and I don't, I don't even know the answer, but budgets are a list of priorities. How do we go about solving the problem? And when you sit down at your budget, you know, how much does that come up, that whole thing? We have people that are being forced out. Um, you know, it's getting more expensive to live here. How, how, how do we deal with that? I think that is a tough, I, I, you know, it almost seems like it takes care of itself as the economy changes. But um, that could be years from now. You never know how long the economy is going to continue to grow. I mean, the next question you'd ask is how long, what if Nashville, because Nashville's a great place to live. It's a great city. You know, I'm, I moved from Birmingham here. Um, I don't want to move back to Birmingham. Nashville is awesome. And um, people, I think, are experiencing the same thing. So there's a lot of evidence, you know, we don't have state income tax. Cost of living still isn't that high compared to a lot of places. So we could have this problem for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, it is, and it's, I don't, you know, you could come up with programs. Um, I guess you guys raise everybody up and raise, you know, increase jobs, salaries, which I think we're doing. We're drawing a lot of jobs to the Middle Tennessee area. So I think overall, and it's hard. It is a hard question. And it's made even harder by the fact that some people are getting their property reappraisals. Yeah. And, and obviously, um, not everyone's is going up. Some people are actually paying less because the average is it has to stay the same. But some people are going to see more. Yeah. The property values have gone up. That's a good thing. But sometimes that means higher uh, property taxes. Um, but as you said, what do people need to know about the property taxes right now in, in, in Nashville? It's, it's supposed to be a net neutral Act, uh, calculations. So really, it's not supposed to have any growth. Now you are going to have growth from new addresses that are added, um, but that, that's not the, the purpose of it. So they go back and we recalculate that, and, and we make sure that it's a we take we take out all the new properties that have been added since the last time. So we come up with a net neutral impact on. That's why it went down so much over the previous. I think it was 485 or 435 last time. 4.5, uh, so it's gone down to 3.15. Okay. So that's, that's a big big drop, but I think overall everything increased like 37% throughout the county. And, and I think people, that's, that's hard for some people to understand. The rate has gone down, but some people are gonna be paying more. It, it's hard, I, you know, I've watched a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of people try to explain it on television, and it is kind of a hard concept to understand. It's like, there's more, how can it be less? Right. But it is, because the way you do calculate is you back out the new additions when you're trying to come up with that rate. Um, you got to remember, I mean, look at Germantown. I mean, 10 years ago, there wasn't a lot. I mean, the housing values over there weren't what they are now. I think some sold over for a million dollars. Right. I mean, that's a lot. That's a big change. Mm -hmm. And that whole area over there is totally changed. Every time I drive by there, I see something new. There are a ton of new condos. Each yeah. one of those condos is taxed. That's right. And so that's a lot of new money coming in. 
the that's metro. Right. That's right. And that's where that, that's the trickle down. You go to sales tax, but then you also need transportation. It all just kind of falls. The demands all fall in line. Um, let's go to Hiram. Hello, Hiram. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Uh, I have a question. I was wanting to know when y'all think the state workers might get a pay raise. And also in the past, when they had Opryland theme park, uh, the employees got a free day for when they had a day off and they don't have it anymore, would the state consider uh, giving out, going to ball games or uh, maybe concerts in this place? And I'll hang up and listen. Thank you. All right, he's talking about the state. Of course, we're talking about Metro, so let's talk about Metro employees. Sure. We talked a little bit about the raise already, but let's mm -hmm. get more into that. What are we talking about as far as the raise? And then he's talking about, um, I guess there was a day a long time ago to go to... I'm trying Opera to remember Land. when that was. Uh, that obviously would have been a while ago. Yeah, I don't... But are the, uh, what, are, what are some, I guess, perks or other things that might be out there for Metro employees? Uh, some of the other things that they've added is a 10 cent differential pay, so if shift differential pay, they've added 10 cents to that. Um, there's also uh, a tuition assistance pilot, and it was really hard to budget for that because you don't know how it's going to be used or utilized by employees, but it has to be specific to the work that they're performing. So if you work in the budget office, you'll have to get some kind of business degree in order to qualify for it. Uh, there's also an increase in uniform policy for the police and fire department. Those are some of the other things that they've added. And one of the big what things... Is that a what is uniform that? Uniform... What does that I'm mean? sorry, uniform allowance. I misspoke. It, they get an allowance per year to, to buy uniforms for, for work. Okay. So they're, whatever they need to buy, their holsters or, or whatever. Right. So there's an increase for that. Yeah, there's an increase for that. One of the other things that's a big deal is that the, the, they've adopted the, the, the family leave policy throughout Metro. So if there's something happens with your family, you can actually have some time off. It doesn't sound like there's a day to go to Opryland. No. <laughs> well, if you you know if you've accrued some vacation or you have some personal well, time, you, you, you can take it. There, take your take yeah, your sure vacation. Could. All right, Hiram, uh, thank you for that call. Now, as we as we were on a break last time, we were talking about just the process of putting the budget together. Mm -hmm. Every department kind of gives a wish list. In the past, mayors have said, "Okay, cut three percent, or cut two percent, or or you know whatever," as an exercise, mm -hmm. and they didn't necessarily cut that much. This time, the directive was there was no directive about cuts. That's correct. Um, and so, what what did, what did you get? You got a, a list of priorities from each department, and go and kind of. I guess let's walk through this process again. Yeah. What happens is once the the kind of the the rules are kind of placed out to the departments, and that happens after after the holidays, um, the departments will go back and they'll compile a list. But they've already been working on it for months. You know, when I was in a department before I transferred over to finance, we were already working on this. We already had our internal departmental meetings on priorities and what we wanted to do, and. <coughs> What they'll do is they'll go into our budget system and they'll enter in every single item that is new for the year and they'll rank it. And they'll also have the mayor's priority listed there so we can kind of track it that way. Um, so that's, through all of that, I think it was close to $150 million and we only had like $25 million to spend. So there's a so lot of prioritization. So when all the priorities came in, there were 150 All the requests, million. not all priority. The, yeah, all, all the requests. requests. Yeah, because it could be something way down on the list, but right. still considered a request. So that was there was a lot more in requests than there was for money. Yes. Uh, money to spend. There always is. I mean, and that makes sense. There always is going to be. And where are we as far as personnel? Uh, there have been some lean years. I think there have been mm -hmm. some cuts in personnel. You used to work in another metro department. Yes, I did. Um, and where where are we overall as far as personnel? Are we in a, in a, are we growing the number of personnel? Are we cutting the number of metro employees? What do we see in there? When I was in a department, it was a different view than than I'm now in the budget office, and and, and th all those come through me, all the new hiring exceptions and things like that. So what we do is we review to make sure that there's a need, a true need, make sure there's budget dollars available, make sure there's a position, of course. Um, but there's not really a restriction on that, on what they can hire, or who they can hire. As long as they've got the money to, to pay for the position, that's salaries and benefits, and they've got the position, we're not gonna hold them back. Um, we're gonna let them do what they need to do because it's their responsibility to run the department. The department heads right now. That's correct. So there's no hiring freeze. There's no hiring freeze. They anymore. demonstrate a need for a position, it's, it's gonna be approved. That's, yeah. Long, generally, long, generally speaking, but if they might not have the funds to pay for it. Yeah, demonstrate a need, and they have the funds. Right. Then we won't. Then we'll have to get with them and maybe come up with an alternative plan. Or initially, it would be we can't approve it because you don't. You can't pay for it. 
So are we hiring a lot of new people right now? Because I know there was a period where we were cutting a lot. So maybe departments feel the need. They need some more people. What, what are you seeing right now? Uh, you know, I think it's, I just think it's normal attrition. I don't know what our um, overall staffing level is I, I th maybe around 92 percent which I think is kind of normal to turn over I mean a lot of positions turn over more naturally than others I think the finance I've only got one vacancy in my department uh, but there are a lot of departments that, especially in the finance because there's not going to be that turnover we're probably close to full full staffing with a lot of departments have more turnover just because of the seasonal work like parks if you can think of all the turnover they're going to have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sort of have ebbs and flows in, in what they're doing, but I think it's pretty normal. I don't think there's anything odd. pretty standard. Yeah, it's pretty as standard as right now. What you're seeing as far as hiring? Okay. Yeah. All right. Why don't we take a break? Uh, if you want to call in, there is the number six one five seven three seven plus six one five seven three seven seven five eight seven. Take a break. Be back right after this.